I've been interested in mysteries, monsters, true crime stories, and all the other darkness and strangeness that's out in this world for as long as I can recall. But this story is a new one to me, and it's honestly one of the few murder cases that really got to me. That being said, this is one of the few episodes I'll be presenting that comes with a warning. Listener discretion is advised. It began on the night of January 10th, 1992, in Madison, Indiana. Three young girls, Tony Lawrence, 15, Hope Rippey, 15, and Lori Tackett, 17, visited the house of Melinda Lovelace, 16. Upon their arrival, Lovelace brought out a knife and explained to the group that she had a plan to scare another girl, Shonda Scherer, 12, because she was a copycat and had stolen Lovelace's girlfriend. The girls drove to Scherer's father's house to lure her out by inviting her to the witch's castle, where they said Scherer's girlfriend, Amanda Heverin, would be waiting. Scherer couldn't join at the time because her parents were awake, but told them that she could sneak out around midnight if they came back for her. They agreed, and by 12.30 a.m., Scherer was in the car with the girls. Lovelace had hidden under a blanket in the back seat with the knife, but soon sprang from her hiding spot, put the knife to Scherer's throat, and interrogated her about her relationship with Heverin. When they arrived at the witch's castle, they bound Scherer with rope around her arms and legs while taunting and threatening her. After a short time, they got back in the car and drove around town, getting lost several times before finally finding a garbage dump in a densely forested area. Lawrence and Rippy were frightened at this point and stayed in the car while Loveless and Tackett took Scherer into the dump, forced her to strip naked, and beat her. After the beating, Loveless attempted to slash Shara's throat, only to find that the knife she had brought was too dull. At this point, Rippy decided to exit the car and join in the attack. She held Shara down while Loveless and Tackett took turns stabbing Shara in the chest. They then strangled her with a rope and placed her in the trunk of the car, believing her to be dead. The girls drove back to Tackett's house where they drank pop and cleaned themselves up until they heard Shara screaming outside in the trunk. Tackett then took a paring knife from the house out to the car where she stabbed Shonda several more times, including in the back of the head. They then got back in the car and went cruising, stopping occasionally to beat Shonda with a tire iron whenever she would scream. After some time, they stopped once more at Tackett's house to clean up again. This woke up Tackett's mother, who reprimanded the girls for being out so late, ignorant of the broader extent of their transgressions. Tackett agreed to take the other girls home, and then soon left the house again. After leaving, they would stop at a gas station where they filled up a 2-liter Pepsi bottle with gasoline. They then drove north to Lemon Road, where they would remove Shonda from the car, still breathing, wrapped in a blanket, cover her in gasoline, and light her on fire. After all she had endured through the night, Shonda Scherer would die not from her stab wounds, collapsed skull, or even her burns, but from smoke inhalation. Her body would be discovered several hours later by two hunters. The four girls involved in the killing would be charged and sentenced for their crimes, but have all since been released from prison. A small memorial now sits on the site of the murder. This story would be horrific no matter who the victim or killers were, but the combination of the helplessness, naivete, and youth of the victim, the pettiness of the motive, the paradoxical twist of a group of young, seemingly harmless girls being cold-blooded killers, and the extreme, yet futile, endurance of Shonda Shearer makes this case stand out to me as possibly the most shocking and horrifying case I've heard in my time. If you'd like to learn more about Shonda Shearer and other true crime stories, I've included links below to videos and other resources. And if you like what I'm doing here and want to support me, please like, subscribe, and share on your social platform of choice. I post new bite-sized videos daily about mysteries, cryptids, aliens, and all things strange to kick off your day. See you tomorrow.